Generation 9 still felt so far away before the latest Pokémon Presents. I think most of us were expecting Legends Arceus DLC, but instead we were given a small free story update with the unexpected reveal of Generation 9 to follow. If you haven't seen it, I uploaded my reaction to this reveal because I didn't have time that day to work on a proper video. But now I do. Despite the short reveal trailer, and despite how little we know about the games, there's a lot to talk about, especially considering the unprecedented 2022 release date. If you're down for some in-depth discussion about Pokémon Scarlet and Pokémon Violet, then strap in. Here's the big question. Is it too soon? The answer is yes. No matter which way you look at it, 2022 is way too soon for these games. Legends has only been out for about a month and we're already on track for a Gen 9 release later this year. I even would have taken earlier mid-2023 over late 2022. The yearly release schedule Pokémon follows is unreasonable, but that isn't something I need to explain to you. Bottom line is that these games deserve more time. Does this mean you can't be excited? No, of course not. I'm excited. I am so excited. But with your excitement, it's good to keep in mind that we have no idea what's going on in Game Freak HQ. I just hope that the devs are okay, and are being treated well despite the ever-so-close release date. These details are things we'll likely never know for sure which is why it's important to keep them in mind. So, the games are revealed. They're releasing later this year. That's how it is, and that's how it will be, as unfortunate as it is. Personally, I think it's okay to share excitement for a new Pokémon adventure on the horizon, as well as discuss and theorize about what the new games will be like. But still, it does not change the fact that these are definitely too soon. It isn't new information that our region this time around is clearly based on Spain. If the resemblance in architecture wasn't enough, you can see a map posted right in the room the guard enters. I could list off the various real-world locations the cities and buildings are based off in-game, but somebody actually from Spain has already done so on Twitter, which is far better than me doing it. I'll link this thread in the description, and be sure to check it out because it is super informative. The region looks absolutely beautiful, and to no surprise, it's looking to be open-world. It looks to me like the game could almost be running in the same engine as Legends. It feels like everything has been leading up to a fully open-world Pokémon game, even starting with the Wild Area. Of course, these are details that are yet to be confirmed, but that's what I'm thinking right now. It's a small detail, but I really like these buildings, which I assume to be Poké Centers. They have big glowing holograms on the roofs, which I think are meant to be easy to spot from miles away. That way, if you're far out in the wild, you can always see where the nearest Pokémon Center is. There's still so little we know about the region, even including its name, but I am super excited to learn more about it. There's something pretty important to keep in mind when it comes to the graphics of Pokémon trailers. Game footage is not final. No, I'm not saying that to discredit any criticism, but it's just a reminder that we have seen graphics of Pokémon games improve over time, from initial reveal to release. Either way, it's okay to speak your two cents about how the game is looking, which I'm going to do as well. I think it looks gorgeous. The landscapes and overall environment design feels like a step up from Legends, and I love how bright and colorful everything is. The way those sheets blow in the wind outside the player's house is just mesmerizing. Maybe it says something about me how easily impressed I am if sheets drawing in the wind is enough to make me smile, but hey, that's just how I roll. One thing is that I have seen a generous amount of complaints about the character models. And they look okay? They are different for sure, but I don't think that's actually a bad thing. I think a big issue is that we've only seen the player character. It's hard to form a full opinion on a human model when we've only seen one human, I guess. But I still understand why some may not like them. This is another thing that could improve before release as well. I guess the actual protagonist designs themselves are another topic of discussion, and I definitely have some gripes. I don't want to get on a tangent, but I do think that while extensive character customization we get in modern games is super good, it's done some painful damage to the actual default designs. I found they've gotten more plain in favor of making them more of a blank slate for you to take and change up. Of course, since I'm going to customize mine anyway, the default design shouldn't matter that much, but it's still something I'll always think about. Not saying that I think the designs are bad though, just boring and plain I guess. Oh, and I can't forget about the actual Pokémon themselves while we talk about graphics. Just look at them! This should have been done ages ago. 
Part of the reason why I loved a new snap so much was that it was absolutely breathtaking, including giving all Pokemon real textures that help them feel like living creatures, giving them scales, fur, fuzz, feathers, and it looks like they're doing the same thing in Scarlet and Violet. I am obsessed with the scales on Saviper already. So excited to see how all the Pokemon look with these buffed up textures. So overall, I think the game is looking really good, but of course we have to see more to get a real feel for it, and wait to see how the visuals develop over time. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. New Pokemon are my absolute favorite part of any new Pokemon game, and I think we're already in for an amazing treat just with our first stage starters. Let's take them one by one. First off, and my absolute favorite of the three, Sprigatito. Of course, its name is a combination of Sprig and Gatito, which is kitten in Spanish. I'd also like to mention that its Japanese name, Niaoha, is positively adorable. There's a lot of love for this leaf kitty, and I think it's the most popular of the three. There's also a lot of speculation about its evolution. If you want my two cents, I think it doesn't matter if this kitty stands up or stays down. As long as the design is good, then that's all that matters. Let's take a look at this lad, Fue Coco. He is absolutely adorable. The name is a combination of Fuego, fire in Spanish, and Cocodrilo, crocodile in Spanish. I've seen a lot of people comparing its design to an apple, but I think a more likely inspiration is a red hot pepper due to the fire typing. I am super excited to see what this guy evolves into. Last, but definitely not least, we've got Quaxley. This little guy is obviously based on a duck with a cute little blue tuft on his head that resembles a sailor hat. I'm actually not sure on the name origin for this one though. I know the qua is definitely for quack, but I don't know the significance, if any, behind the zlai part of it. If anyone knows, do let me know. I've heard a lot of people speculating this duck might end up evolving into a pirate, which I think would be super awesome. If I'm being honest, I didn't end up being a fan of any of Galar starter Pokemon. I know that's silly, but I'm super happy because I actually am in love with all three of these new starters, and I have super high hopes for their evolutions. If you ask me, these are all excellent testaments to how good the rest of the new Pokémon will be as well. I am super excited to see them. Oh boy, this again. The old National Pokédex. It's already been confirmed that only Pokémon coded within the game will be obtainable and transferable into Scarlet and Violet, similar to Sword and Shield. But really, does anyone actually care? Do we need every single Pokémon in every game? No, we don't. We just don't, to be honest. If Game Freak has to stick to this yearly release schedule, then it's just flat out not feasible or necessary to have all thousand plus Pokémon in existence to be in every game. I honestly don't have much else to say about this topic, I just wanted to get my own two cents out about it. National decks? More like unnecessary decks, or something like that. I think I've covered all I want to talk about in regards to Generation 9. Games that are definitely coming way sooner than they should, but still give me the same excitement and butterflies the thought of a new Pokemon adventure always gives me. Oh, but seriously, why are they going back to two versions? I thought we were over that. I'm not looking forward to split content again, but it is what it is. Does anyone know what version they want to get already? I sure don't, at least not until we see Legendaries. I feel like the design of the logos gives some insight into what the Legendaries might look like, but it's a bit too vague to come up with anything right now. Well, as always, thanks for listening to me ramble on about Pokémon, whether you agree with my thoughts or not. Let's all look forward to the new games together, all while hoping they might delay them. Please. Thank you, everyone.